So this is the third in a series of three videos where we're looking at the squat action and we've seen that essentially what we do in the squat is go from a sitting position to a standing position. And we saw that the first action was simply getting up from the chair, the second action was to use a firm chair or a bench to limit your movement, so we performed the bench squat. And now we're going on to the full squat, which we would use in a gym situation. Now, if you go to any gym, you will see a bunch of 20-somethings lifting very heavy weights, um, being perfectly happy with that and using it as a, as a bit of a social occasion. And, that, and that's great, and that is using the squat for heavy weight lifting, perhaps even towards you know, competitive sport. But what I'm more interested in is using the squat for rehabilitation. So somebody who is perhaps a senior who has not uh, used a gym before, somebody who's had a knee or a hip injury, perhaps an even a knee or a hip replacement. And they've progressed from the sit to stand action, which initially they found difficult. So, you know, they found it difficult getting out of a chair, difficult to control it as they sat back down in the chair. So we've progressed from that to the bench squat. So they're now able to stand and sit from a bench using the action that we, we used in the, in the uh, second video and they're now comfortable with that movement. So let's have a look at the squat itself. So, when we're in a gym situation, we'll have the luxury of a squat rack. Now this is what we call a half rack, so it consists of hooks or, or J hooks with, which slot the bar uh, onto the frame and then safety spotters which are these bars. Now you may not have that so you may need to have somebody to pass the bar to you and you may need to have somebody staying behind you and putting their, their arms into a position just to give you some reassurance in the bottom part of the uh, movement. But let's have a look at the exercise itself. I'll talk you through the sort of traditional exercise as it's practiced, and then we'll look at some modifications for our target audience, which is more rehabilitation. So the bar is on the rack, and it's at a position where it is slightly below my shoulder height. So I'm going to walk into the bar and my knees will be slightly bent into what we call a quarter squat position and then all I need to do is to straighten my legs and I will then have the bar on my shoulders. So the first thing to say is that when you're doing a squat you will angle forwards and that is the position that you will fail in. So in other words when you get to your last repetition you think I can't do any more then that's often the position. So when you lift the bar from the rack, you do so facing the rack. So that if I'm fiddling, the bar can go back on the rack. If I do it this way, and I come in to try and put the bar back on the rack, it's pushing me back and I can topple over. So we've got the bar on the rack, the weights are on the bar itself, and these are then uh, clipped onto the bar and you may have a weighted bar which is solid or you may have a bar with different, uh, a different format of, of weights. So what I've got to do is to put that bar across my shoulder and I do so by walking in and I position the bar, I'm in my quarter, quarter squat position and I just stand up, get my balance, take a step back. So I'm just going to turn with the bar at the second towards the camera. So you can see that the bar is across my shoulders rather than level with my neck. So this is what we call a high bar position. Now you can have the bar slightly lower, sort of across your shoulder blade if you were. So it can come right down into this position which would be a low bar position. But the high bar position pads the bar slightly with the large shoulder muscles, so with the trapezius muscles. And what I do is to try to move from the position I'm in now, where my, my chest is collapsing forwards, to lift my chest up. So I'm pressing my breastbone forwards, and we call that action 
a sternal lift movement. So I push the bar forwards, and as I do so, I try to pull the bar against my shoulders. So I'm now in a position where my shoulders are relatively firm, my elbows have been drawn down and backwards, so my shoulder blades are sort of at a sort of a military attention position, if you like, and my breastbone is lifted. So once I'm in that position, my feet are slightly wider than hip width, and then they are turned out. Now, if I'm using the safety spotters, what I will do is come close in, make sure my hands are not going to get trapped, look up at the wall, elbows down and back, come down, touch the rack, and come back. Down, touch the rack, and come back. Now, if I'm not using a safety spotter, then what I will have to do is to stop at a position where, in a traditional squat, my hips are slightly below knee level. So I come down, and then back. Down, and then back. Step into the frame again. Down on one side, down on the other side. Looking at the back squat, and we've just changed the camera angle slightly so that you can see from behind, so I've got my setup then on my uh, rack and I'm on the J-hooks, so the, the bar is positioned on those, and I've got the spotter bars so that that can dictate how low I go. And both of these are adjustable for the depth that you want to go down to and also your height. And I want these so that the bar rests slightly below my shoulder, so I get into the bar in this position and then I simply stand up. So the first thing I make sure then is that the bar is positioned equidistant from the, the hooks and the bar itself has knurlings on it, so you know, it's slightly rough, but these can also be used as marks. So you'll notice that there's a mark here and a mark here at the end of the knurling and that lies inside the J-hook, so if you keep your hands inside that position then you're in no, no risk of um, trapping your hands. So I go into the bar, step in, position myself in the centre, take my time, and then all I'm doing is standing up. So the bar is now clear of the J-hook, so I take one step back. Position my feet at the 5 to 1 position, slightly wider than hip width. Position my hands, lift my breastbone, draw my shoulders back down. So, I'm coming from this position, I'm going to move slightly forward so you can see where I go down onto the spotting bars. So from there, breathe in and hold your breath. Breathe out at the top, breathe in, hold your breath. Breathe out at the top. Once you finish the movement, step in, look at one side of the bar, look at the other side, and then come out. So when you're first starting, the important thing is simply to breathe. However, as you start to hold slightly larger weight, you take a deep breath in and you hold that breath throughout the movement, because that increases the pressure within the body. So-called intra-abdominal and intra-thoracic pressure which gives you that feeling of security. However, what I will say is that's a, a relatively advanced technique in some ways. So something you'll get into after you've been doing that for a couple of months and you may be working with a training partner or working with a, with a personal trainer. It is a, there is a safety consideration and that is that if you hold your breath, you can sometimes feel lightheaded. So what I would say to you is when you're starting, simply breathe. So normally, you would take a breath in as you go down into the movement and breathe out as you come up. So I breathe in and breathe out. Or if you find that difficult to control, simply keep breathing normally, so you know, rather than panting. Okay, so that's an additional uh, positional view then of the squat from behind. So that's the traditional format of the squat. And that's what we call a half squat. So a full squat 
would be where the hips go right down towards the floor. Half squat is where the hips and knees are relatively equal and a quarter squat is a little dip at the top. So how can we modify that? Well the first thing is you might find that your ankles don't have enough flexibility. So what I can do is I can use a piece of wood. So this is just a uh, you know, one centimetre thick piece of wood, place it on the floor, and then I don't step my whole foot on it, I just put my heel on the piece of wood, and my feet are in the same position as they were with the squat. So they're turned out slightly, a sort of a five to one position on the clock, and my hips, if I were to draw a straight line down, would come on the instep of my foot, so my, my, my feet are slightly wider. The second thing to be cautious of is when I'm squatting down, I want an equal weight distribution. So as I'm going down, I want my weight to be equal on both sides. So I don't want to favour one side, because if I do that, obviously there's less stress on this side, more stress on this side, and I'm off balance. Secondly, as I go down, I don't want one shoulder to be dipping down compared to the other. So if that's the case, then it's useful to work with a partner or personal trainer to try and get that corrected at the start of the training because then you're not practicing an incorrect habit. The other alternative is to work in front of the mirror and you know, to pick up sort of an imaginary vertical line or even to taper a vertical line on it and make sure you've got as much of you on the right side as you have on the left side. Now we come down to the feet, so we said that the, the feet were turned out and as I go down my knees want to drive along the side of, uh, along the, the uh, position of the foot, so in other words my knees are coming out slightly. So if I were to have an imaginary car light on my kneecaps, they'd be shining slightly apart rather than together. So some people prefer the feet to be parallel, in which case the car light would shine forwards, but what you want to avoid is the knees drifting inwards. So I don't want to come into a, a, a mock knee position as I'm coming here. And the reason for that is, again, at this stage it puts you slightly off balance and it puts a different stress onto the knee. So, we're focusing, because we're learning the technique, we're focusing on good alignment and we're looking at the foot, we're looking at the knee, the position of the hips, the spine, the shoulders, the head. And as we do the movement with the head, we're, we've drawn our shoulders down, we've lifted our breastbone up, so we're actually lengthening through the spine rather than dropping the chest, rounding the shoulders and dropping the head forwards, which rounds the spine and puts some stress on the neck. So we're going for good alignment to start with. However, there is a rider there, and that is to say that your body will compensate. So I mentioned that my thoracic spine is slightly rounded. Now that doesn't bother me. I've compensated for that over the years. And so my body moves in a slightly different way. And that's fine and that's desirable. So we have to be careful when we're looking at good alignment that we're not too strict as we start to improve. So there will be cases where a sub-optimal alignment, so in other words, an alignment which deviates slightly from the textbook, is actually better for you because it suits your body. So you might have one hip which is stiffer on one side than the other, so-called hip dysplasia, and that's because you know your ball and socket joint is a slightly different shape. Well, you wouldn't want to force yourself to use a textbook position of your hips and spine if that's painful for you. So once we've learned that technique, and once we're sort of moving towards a more textbook position, we have to go through those considerations and say, well, you know, is that comfortable for you? And is it something which is suitable for your body type and your body proportions? And be prepared to change it if it isn't. Okay, so that's a quick look through the squat, the traditional squat exercise.